that. So, Kaiman, is that now the name of that ship that we're all sailing on into DVD land? Um, how's everybody doing this morning? Excellent. My name is Jarrett Weisselman, and I have been covering this show for six years. I've met a lot of you, I've tweeted with more of you, and it's safe to say there is no more dedicated fandom than the Vampire Diaries fandom. You guys wait in line, and because of your intense devotion, we are in Hall H for the very first time. So, are you guys ready for the biggest Vampire Diaries panel ever? Well, let's get it started. First up, star Michael Malarkey. The lovely Candace Akala. One half of all of our new favorite ships, Ian Summerhalder. Executive producer, Julie Pleck. Paul Wesley. Executive producer, Caroline Dries. And last, but by no means least, Kat Graham. Guys, give it up for the cast of The Vampire Diaries. I'm down there. <laughs> Are we allowed to sit? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Everyone, please. Right next Just waiting for the ladies to arrive. It must be very early. It's extremely quiet in here. <laughs> guys, can make... There you go. How many of you guys slept over last night? I love... Uh, Paul, let me go to you. I'm curious, when, back when Vampire Diaries actually featured diaries, did you ever envision that six years later you would be surrounded by 5,000 of your closest fans in the biggest Comic-Con ballroom there is? Um, I, I, wait, what does this have to do with diaries? You used to write in diaries, it's fine, we can move on. I just feel like when, I, wanna, when I wanna hear the fans go wild, I just need to say two words. Jared and Jensen. <laughs> Don't worry, they're coming up, they're coming up, they're coming up. Right, now, what was, your what was your question? What does it mean to see all of these people here for the show that you guys work so hard for? Um, uh, no, honestly, guys, uh, it's amazing. This is the first time in Hall H. I can't see the end of the room. Uh, I'm slightly intimidated. because you're drunk. Um, I am also drunk. <laughs> I haven't slept. Um, it means a lot. I know you guys woke up early, and, I, uh, and I, I speak on behalf of all of us. We really appreciate it, and we love you guys. Yeah. So, it's the truth. Thank you. Julie, it's been a very long journey you've all been on in Hall H. Is it in any way bittersweet that, you know, someone is missing who helped put the show on the map? Yeah, of course it's been. Oh, who, Jesus, who? I can't talk. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? The cookie? No, of course. No. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. Of course it's bittersweet. Uh, we miss Nina. She's been with us for six years. Uh, we miss Kevin. He's been with us for all that time, too. And... Both are back home in L.A. and uh, hopefully sending us good love from, from home. Absolutely. The, the sleeping curse, I think, was a really interesting way to sort of tie up that storyline. As a storyteller, what excites you about the opportunities afforded to you by having her sort of gone but not forgotten? Well, what's nice about it is there's still like a really intense core of romance, almost like in a fairy tale way attached to it. Damon, you know, has put the love of his life away. <laughs> And, uh, and now he's got to figure out how he's... She's just taking a little nap. Just a little nap. Six, 60, 70 years. Yeah, nap. what's 60, 70 years for a vampire? It'll go by like that. You know. By the uh, way, I have no problem playing a 17-year-old in my mid-60s. <laughs> if I'm pulling it off at 32, guys, you know? <laughs> what, do you th what do you think? You don't, look, you don't look a day over 40, Paul. <laughs> you don't look a day over 40, buddy. That's what they tell me. So, I'm curious, Caroline, with uh, Bonnie and Elena sort of linked now, does the lovely Cat Graham have the best job security on this death-prone show? Uh, Bonnie dies like every season, so uh, yeah, it's like nine lives. I'm not sure, we're probably at six maybe now, yeah. five or six. So yeah, she's got at least three seasons left in her. 
Nice. I like it. <laughs> Kat, what was your reaction when you found out how Bonnie would play into the Sleeping Beauty curse for Elena? You know, it's very interesting because I obviously, I've known that Nina was leaving for a long time, um, but I, uh, I thought it was a really clever way to um, kind of kind of keep Elena there and keep her presence there um, and keep the door open in a lot of ways for her to be able to come back. Um, but it also created an interesting dynamic going into season seven for Bonnie and Damon and uh, them to have to deal with uh, the fact that, you know, it's Bonnie's alive and Elena's not and it's uh, kind of on Bonnie <laughs> to <laughs> but, stay alive. <laughs> but it felt super earned, you know, by having... Damon and Bonnie in the 90s together for so long. It was such a rich relationship by the time we got to the finale. I mean, for Ian and Kat, for both of you, what did you like about how that relationship sort of flourished last season? That was actually, I don't know, that was my favorite stuff that we've ever done. Yes. I think the beginning of season six for Bonnie and Damon was the best stuff ever. What do you think? <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun and it was very dynamic and these two people, you know, it's funny because they hate each other, they love each other, they resent each other, they're stuck together. It's sort of a, an amazing recipe for a lot of cool drama. Yeah. But Kat and I love to work together because we work together with the same coach in the same way and we have a lot of really good fun. Yeah, one of my favorite episodes was the episode that Ian directed, and it was actually the first time that I'd ever been in a scene where the director is also the actor. So we had some really cool stuff, and uh, um, he, I'm excited that Ian, you're directing again in season seven, right? Is that the plan? Well, um, yeah, hopefully. Okay. I don't yes, know. absolutely. Sorry, I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, um, we're, we're going to do it again. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Um, it was really great for us to shoot some scenes together. And uh, definitely when, we got to, when I got to come back, it was great that one of my first scenes was definitely with Ian, and it was great. Yeah. Julie, talk a little bit about sort of Damon post Elena Sleeping Beauty curse. I mean, is he a monk now? Or do you just like yeah. put that monk energy? my ass. <laughs> Do you just put that energy into sort of different areas of that character? <laughs> I'm waiting for Ian to make an inappropriate joke about putting that energy into different <laughs> Just wait for it. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the, the challenge for Damon is obviously Elena said to him, please live your life and be who you are. And, and yet we know who Damon is. Uh, so I think for him, it's who am I without this girl right by my side? Because she's the center. She's the one that... She's the one that grounds me and makes me want to make the right decision and walk the straight line. Um, so for him, the line's going to get a little crooked, you know, and, and he's going to kind of probably hopscotch over it because I know you love to hopscotch. So, uh, he'll, you know, the struggle will be good. It, it's, uh, we'll get to see a lot of naughty Damon trying to not be naughty. I love hopscotch. <laughs> Ian, what, I mean, in some ways, it's sort of like you're playing a new Damon this year. That has to be exciting. Or an old Damon. Actually, on the, au contraire, mon frere. It's actually the exact It's opposite. actually the opposite. It's the old fucking Damon. <laughs> <laughs> the Damon that we really fell in love with. <clears throat> and that's the goal. It's that, you know, let's bring that back, that energy, that sexy, volatile, fun, scary, dangerous... All that shit that made you guys love him to begin with, I'm bringing it back. Caroline, as writers, what excites you guys about getting back to the root of Damon? Well, it's interesting, you know, we've seen Damon pining for Catherine for 145 years, and then he was pining for Elena, you know, seasons two through six. So it's fun for us as writers to think, what, who is Damon Salvatore when he's you know, not pining after a girl, when he has his girl. And so, you know, it was interesting, like, I was just talking to Ian the other day, like, what does Damon do in his spare time? Like, what does he do when he's alone? And I... I I'm um, still waiting <laughs> for Ian and Paul to What, make what else does he do when he's alone? So, um... Oh, my. <laughs> a lot so, of stuff. So, I, it's, it's fun for writers to kind of get to dig a little deeper into the character. Yeah. And figure out, like, you know, what makes him tick, and we're going to see a lot of bromance between Stefan and Damon and see how the dynamic works now that their mom is kind of becoming part of Mystic Falls. Absolutely. As, uh, as sort of Delena moved into a crypt, as you were, there was the rising of another relationship on the Vampire Diaries. Woo! One that goes by the name of Steriline. 
By the way, doesn't can we change sound... that name? By the way, no, guys. I was going to say, doesn't it sound like so clean? A, sounds we're like something gonna in a hospital. We're going to make a hand sanitizer called we're, yeah. Steriline. Yeah, we're going to we're we, going to trademark it. it and sell it at Hall H. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, can you guys come up with a different name though? Dude, you got you're like what you, Delena, like that's any better? Or <laughs> Like At least it, it doesn't sound like it's in a hospital. Yeah, Del Delana sounds like it could potentially be a disease. <laughs> Steriline sounds like the cure for the disease. <laughs> wow, that was, that was actually good and witty, well, brother. Well, you just come up with that right now. I'm was impressed. Was that like on the spot? Yeah, I mean, it was. That's really I good. Like, that's thought really of good. this last night. <laughs> you, you weren't standing up thinking about what you were going to say. <laughs> Paul, for a lot of fans, this relationship has been a long time coming. What excites you about seeing it come to fruition? I just love making Candace feel awkward on the set. Um, <laughs> Candace is married. Um, I'm friends with her husband. Um, I love when we have to do makeout scenes because it's so uncomfortable um, <laughs> and so funny. And, um, but you, we love each other. Don't we love each other? Don't oh, you love yeah. me? Don't you just, just love me? so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do I, I, no, honestly, it's, 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 uh, if I'm going to answer the question sincerely, I, I personally, my opinion is I, I do like uh, the fact that there is so much history between these two characters. It obviously was very platonic. There was that little kind of those little moments, those VD moments where you sort of, zoom in on the eyes and there's something going on. It could happen between anyone. I feel like Ian and I have had those moments. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's been a, yeah, right? There's a couple shippers there? That's what I'm talking about. You no, know, I, I, I am my brother's keeper. Based on that, <laughs> why, there why, it go, is. why go across the street when you go across the hall? No. Um, <laughs> so, hey, relax, relax. Um, so, um, I taught him that one, by the way. I did. In more ways than one. Um, <laughs> so, what are we doing here? Um, anyway, I really like Steriline. What do you think, Candace? Oh, well, after that. Um, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I love a good slow burning relationship in a television series, and you get to watch Build. And um, I really like the characters together. So I'm excited to see what happens in season seven. The few scripts that we have read, um, I'm really excited for you guys to see. And I don't want to say anything else because otherwise I'll get in trouble for spoilers, but. That's okay. Well, before we look ahead, I want to keep talking, Candace, about Caroline this season when she turned her humanity off because that was one of my absolute favorite things that has ever been on the Vampire Diaries, hands down. That arc, watching you go from the devastation to the complete ripping people's throats out to like falling against stuff and against soda machines and making out, like it was all very good. It was all wonderful. Yeah, what did you- If you want to ever try something really disturbing, put a lot of fake blood in your mouth and have to make out with someone else. It definitely, I'm glad it all worked out on television, but that was definitely an <laughs> awkward day at work. I mean, you, over the years, you've taken her to such different extremes, you know, from human to vampire and now to this. What excited you about what you got to play through that humanity-free version of this character this year? Uh, it was really fun. Um, you know, it was such a tragic storyline. And when I kind of knew and was clued in that, Sher you know, Sheriff Forbes was going to pass this season and how it was going to happen. And I thought it was just such a human, you know, obstacle and that these characters hadn't really faced. And there was no supernatural spell that could break the fact that she had cancer. And I thought that was really powerful. So from all that grief and all that sadness to just go from, you know, heartless badass Caroline, I thought it was really, really fun and um, a really cool change for the character. Don't you love the fact that like, Caroline's like murdered and like, and like done all this crazy shit and now she's like gonna be like, probably planning a dance in like <laughs> episode eight. She's gonna be like coordinating. She's a multitasker. It's really amazing. It's a lot done at We're all times. All sociopathic murderers. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, yeah. when you, you know, we look ahead for this couple, uh, what can you sort of tease about what lies in store for them in season seven? Um, <clears throat> a lot of, of very unexpected twists and turns actually. Um, what the fun of this couple is that they're just coming together. Uh, they're just getting really cemented in the romantic status. And so, um, you know, as we left it off, you had sort of said, I will be here when you're ready. And so she's trying really, 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 really hard not to be ready. Um, but she can't resist. <laughs> shirtless stuff every episode. Uh, it's not going to happen. A lot of, I think, yeah, more. Sh Do you guys want more shirtless scenes from uh, Stefan? No. <laughs> 
I think this is a formal request. That was season one when I was a youngster, guys. <laughs> Times have changed. <laughs> Well, in the show's grand tradition of like semi-dysfunctional relationships, it would be remiss if I didn't talk about Enzo and Lily and whatever is happening there. Uh, Michael. Are you going to bone our mom? Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's just get it on the morning, table. Morning, everyone. She'd, she'd, be, about she'd be Enzo's first. <laughs> What'd you say? No, that's a joke. That's nope. some of my character <laughs> research coming out. Yeah. No, carry on. You know, Enzo definitely got to sort of be a part of a lot of the action this year in terms of propelling the story forward with Lily and what she brought to Mystic Falls. What excites you about sort of his role in all of that? More screen time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> um, I love the fact that there's a really kind of um, succinct dilemma for Enzo this season, which is about choosing his allegiance. And... Um, you know, does he go with Lily and, and the heretics, or does he go with Damon, or hang out with this chick, you know? And um, I think it's a very clear uh, struggle for him, and um, it's going to be interesting to see where, where, it, where it goes. You know? Absolutely. I'm going to open it up to fan questions in a minute, because I know you guys have a lot of them, so I think there's a line there and a mic there. But before I do that, uh, Julian Caroline, working off what he just said, what can you sort of tease about the heretics in season seven and sort of what the fans in this room can expect when the show comes back? Uh, well, the challenge for the writers, season seven, is co constantly topping the villain from the previous year. And we thought Kai was one of the best villains we've ever had on the show. And so we were thinking, you know, how do we do that? And so by bringing in Lily's family, it's these six villains who can do magic and they're vampires. And it's the first time we ever see our characters try, you know, to go up against them and just kind of react and be like, oh, like, we don't know what we're doing. Like, this is very, very hard. So I think it's going to be um, really kind of exciting and gruesome and violent when, when we start. But the real mystery will be how did Mystic Falls get to be the way we saw it at the end of season six, which is run down and, um, you know, all polluted and boarded up. So there's some, there's some really great new characters, uh, three women, especially uh, Valerie, uh, who we have just cast this weekend uh, and will announce as soon as her deal closes. And, <laughs> and then a new couple, Nora and Mary Louise, who uh, have been together for what, about 120 years, I think. So uh, it's gonna be fun. They're, they're nasty, nasty, nasty girls, but they're gonna be good. Yeah. Yes, to go. There it is. Nice. Right. Well, let's turn it over to you guys. I've talked plenty. We're gonna go first fan question right over here. Hello. Hi. Khaleesi. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, What's that's your question? Me. Uh, my question's for Ian. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's a big room. Be nice to me, yeah. guys. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> She's the mother of dragons, Ian. <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> I'm a happily married man. I understand. But... You can always move to Utah. But... <laughs> Paul, we're no longer married. <laughs> Who? But I'm sure if you asked anyone else... They'd be all over it. <laughs> Have an amazing, amazing con. Thank you so much. Next question. Great question, by the way. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question for Ian. Oh, shit. <laughs> Will you marry me? If Damon, if season six Damon could give season one Damon advice, what would it be? Never change. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, look. This guy makes a lot of bad decisions all the time. And I think after being 174 years old, you would probably think to start thinking before you act and do things, which he doesn't, which is why we kind of love the guy. So if season six Damon could actually talk to season one Damon, I think season six Damon would say, Hey man, remind me how I used to be and take me back to that place. So never change. Yeah. <laughs> never change. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Next question. Hi, my name is Catherine. I'm nicer than Catherine. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> I just look nice, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so my question is for the two hottest brothers. Um, how did you capture the mentality of a 17-year-old teenager or a 24-year-old young adult when you're actually old? Probably... <laughs> no, 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 no. Probably just 15 years. I, I mean, I don't like to. I can't really speak subjectively, but uh, I can speak objectively in looking at Ian that he has the mentality of a 12-year-old. So. <laughs> He, for him, the challenge was playing a 17-year-old, the maturity, <laughs> he had to actually learn how to mature. Um, and, uh, Absolutely. And I, I think you did an okay job. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ian? Some of the smartest people in the world are 12, Paul. <laughs> Listen, we were fortunate enough to be able to play these characters. It, Stefan had the earnest capabilities, the beauty, like the beautiful soft side of a 17 year old, but also too, the same type of angst and confusion. And Damon was, so it's like Arrested Development. Damon was 23, you know, not the TV show, guys. <laughs> Arrested Development, show, as though. in meaning his development was stopped. <laughs> Uh, at 23, but he didn't learn that much. Um, it was very cool, actually, being able to play these, these guys, but the reality of it is, is that, look, <laughs> we still act like kids, and we will forever act like kids, and the day any of us stop acting like kids, it is no bueno. And guys, they make some really, I mean, we live in 2015, and there's some great moisturizers out there. <laughs> <laughs> and two words, sunblock. Daily. <laughs> it's a great question, though, actually. Thank you. It is a good question. Thank you. Sorry for being an idiot. <laughs> Hi, what's your question? Hi, my name is Ashley. And uh, my question is for Paul and Candace. A few seasons back, Klaus vouched his love for Caroline. Could we expect him to come back and fight for her now that we have... It's gonna have to get through me, babe. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll probably kick my ass. <laughs> I don't know if Caroline really wants him back in Mystic Falls, oh, but that's a question you heard for it. Julie. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Julie and Caroline. <laughs> oh, I'm not going there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. They're Hi. here. <laughs> that fell flat. <laughs> Moving on. Can we hear you? Hello. Hello. There oh, you are. Hi, guys. Um, so my name's Courtney. My favorite hey, Courtney. episode... <laughs> my favorite episode is Lost Girls, because... Me too. Me too. Dancing shirtless. Am I right, ladies? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good episode. I wondered what your guys' favorite episode is. Well, oh. mine is Lost Girls. Yeah, mine's Lost Girls. <laughs> Paul just likes to see me dancing half naked. I also think the most brilliant episodes are the ones that I direct. I don't know why. That's just... Um... <laughs> Lost Girls, honestly, for me, and... Julie and I have had this conversation a million times, encapsulated what that season one Vampire Diaries was. It was fun, it was sexy, it was volatile. It was Kayla Yule running around for five days in her underwear. It was us drinking from each other's wrists, being drunk in blood and happiness and decadence and fun. And that was that smarmy, awesome, fun stuff that we are bringing back. But so. wasn't that also the flashback episodes, Lost yeah. Girls? It, yeah. was the it was the first flashback <laughs> episode, it. wasn't it? Uh, it was, yeah, it was the first time we did flashback. Which first I, time we saw Catherine, I, and first time we saw... Yeah, I yeah. love, I, thought, I mean, yeah. I think the flashback episodes on Vampire Diaries are the most powerful episodes. What do you guys think? Yeah. What are your favorites? Yeah. They are. For sentimental reasons, the pilot, but that's just because I'm being sentimental. Stop being sentimental. I know. I don't have a cool answer. Malarkey's actually never seen an episode, but... <laughs> yeah, I just started watching the show since I'm in it. No, I'm just playing. Um, I, you know what? I really liked the 100th episode. I thought that was a pretty banging episode. Yeah. Cap. Oh, um, uh, season three, episode five, The Reckoning? Oh, yeah. That's my favorite episode. I mean, Which that, one? Which one? Uh, the Reckoning. Oh, yeah. Ah. Um, that was actually when Bonnie had lost her powers. I think it was like the, one of the first times she'd lost her powers, and... Uh, she went in, uh, we had a scene with um, 
she had a scene with Matt, uh, Bonnie had a scene with Matt Donovan and he had strapped uh, weights onto himself and that he actually did. Uh, and he was actually at the bottom of the pool and I had to dive in because Bonnie couldn't use her magic. There was nothing she had to rely on, you know, kind of the character had to rely on what she was made of. So I love that about her and it was kind of one of the first times I got to see the character really... Um, she became, I think, a hero for herself because she didn't have any... Uh, she, magic, she couldn't use magic as a crutch. She had to go in and just do the human thing and to save his life. And that was cool. And we got to uh, dive in fully clothed and pull up Zach Rorig, which was totally light, totally easy to do. It was great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that was my favorite Thank episode. Thank you for your question. Thank you. <las> Guys, are you having fun? They're okay, warming up. They're warming up. Are you guys cold? It's cold in here. It's I've, cold I've, and it's Sunday morning, but you're having fun. That's good. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what is your guys' plans for after Vampire? You're like, they're like, we're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? Uh, what is your guys' plans for after Vampire Diaries? It's I'm, never ending. I'm going to sink into a deep depression. <laughs> um... Stare at Ian Somerhalder's headshots. <laughs> watch his reel over and over again to try to get another job. <laughs> what are you going to do, Ian? Guys, I, I thought I was told this was never ending. That's true. Is it, <clears throat> isn't this never ending? I'll tell you what. Ask us that next year. Maybe. <laughs> We're just trying to survive now. Actually, I'm going to get on one of Julie's other nine shows. Yeah, one of Julie's <laughs> other nine shows. Wait, 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 wait. We have a great relationship. You'll hire me. No, no. Done. <laughs> Kat, Kat and I will go do a show. Yeah, we can do, go do a show. <laughs> Love it. All right, thank you for your question. Hi. Hi. Thank you guys so much for being here. So my <laughs> question is, at the end of season five, the other side vanished along with the people inside it. What happens now to the supernatural creatures that die in the series? Done so. Julie? Dead. Caroline? Caroline? What, what does Julie? It? Well, we did that on purpose, so death meant something. So now if they die, they die. And they go to one of Julie Plex's other shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Consume. Also true. Which I think is a solid way to do it. If you die, you die. Logical. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> he dies, he dies. There's a reference. Someone cut it. <laughs> Thank you for your pulling question. A little, uh, Finally. Pulling a little Rocky reference there, Paul. I like it. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hello, I'm Ashley. Good morning, guys. My morning. question is for Paul. Just wanted to let you know I've loved you since season one, but I wanted to know if you and your character have like similar char characteristics in real life. No. What do you mean no? <laughs> no. <laughs> Stefan's like all lovely. What the? Stefan's so sweet though. Charismatic, <laughs> positive, <laughs> hair fanatic. Doesn't complain about dancing. <laughs> the okay. hair, the hair is similar. That's yeah. what That's I was gonna say. It. The hair loves, is very similar. Loves decade dances. <sighs> I don't think Bonnie um, and his hair do. Thank you for loving me since season one. <laughs> that's, 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 I just would like to address that. Um, I literally have nothing in common with Stefan. Um, therefore, you probably wouldn't like me in real life. But, um, but I do my own hair. And I feel really good about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, that deserves a round of applause. Yeah, well. uh, and, uh, look, uh, I, I cry over women a lot, and Stefan is constantly crying over women, and I constantly cry over women. So that's what I have in common. I'm about to start crying over you right now. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Right. That's Thank you for your question. Hi. Hi, my name is Valerie. <laughs> Paul, I'm glad you comb your own hair. <laughs> Thank you. My question's for Julie. Picking back off of Ian's answer, do you foresee it, um, the show ending next season? And if so, do you know how it will end? Mm. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> We're all like... Better be good. I, I'm like, I don't even know how to answer this. Um, 
No, I actually do not foresee the show ending after next season. I think that, uh, I think that we've got a, a, a more story to tell, and I think that we've built this kind of gorgeous family that um, not quite ready to split up yet. So, you know, circumstances and other things may intervene, but as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> we've got we've got lots. However, to can I can I just can I just ask you a question? If it were to end, how would it end? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I know how it ends. Ooh, I she do. knows how it ends, Ooh. folks. I know how it ends. Caroline knows how it ends. Uh, and no matter what happens between now and when it ends, I believe it will remain ending that way, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Who's got the truth serum, guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay, X. Hi, I'm Taylor. And hey, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Hi. Okay, so, oh, my God, this Screen is so big. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> She's not lying. Okay. It's very big. <laughs> it's the truth. Okay, so my question is basically in, or at the end of season five, when Catherine took the cure and then, or got forced the cure, and in season six, she, like, her death progressed really quickly. Why is Damon planning on taking the cure with Elena and planning on like having a long extended life if that's just gonna happen to him. Catherine didn't start to disintegrate until Silas took it from her. So you can be a, a carrier of the cure. Yeah, once the cure is sucked out of you, that's when you start to disintegrate. And then you I don't can know use... why you can't follow these very easy rules. <laughs> <laughs> then you can use Steriline to uh, fix the cure. <laughs> I can't hear it. I can't hear you either. Uh, yeah, well, I have no idea what you guys are talking We can't about. hear anything up here, by the yeah, way. I literally can't hear anything. <laughs> I just hear laughter. It's got to be great. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Did you guys hear us back there? No. Holy cow. Wow. Okay. It goes really I just want you guys back. to I didn't know, know it that we love back. you. I haven't really been able to see you or hear you, so. Wow. We love you. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? It goes Woo! far back. <laughs> That's amazing. Hi. Hi. Hey. How's it going, guys? Hello. What's up, man? Oh, uh, not much. You guys enjoying uh, Comic-Con? Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. Okay. What, what, have, what have you checked out since you've been here? I, I checked out Paul. <laughs> I checked out Ian checking himself out. <laughs> oh, yeah. As in, like, the... <laughs> we lost you, buddy. We lost right. your mic. We've had like no time. We spent the entire day yesterday literally bouncing from, from interview to interview and well, taking silly photos and all that stuff. And... Do we have any good like f party interactions with other actors? Oh, I met. Um, we both did. Christian Slater and Rami Malek <laughs> last night from Mr. Robot. Yes. And I geeked out over them like a fangirl for yeah. five minutes. Like stalker, Julie and I stalker. had a fangirl moment together last night you, yeah. Yeah. where I told her that I met I, I, um, Rami and I, Christian. I physically and... grabbed him. Yes. I did. Yeah. I was like, you're spectacular. Your show is spectacular. And I went on and on, and he just stared at me like, oh, my God. Yes. What's happening? But it was it's my favorite show yeah. right now. So we, we geek out, too. That's why I can't meet people that I'm a fan of, because I, I don't know how to act. <laughs> I really don't. question was going to be, like, what you bring to your characters, like, your own personality. Well, Paul doesn't have a personality oh. that really... Again, the hair for Paul. <laughs> what, what do you guys bring to your char characters? I don't want to answer Cat? this question. I don't, well, not the fashion. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. We have very different styles, obviously. She's much more earthy and uh, um, hippie. Body's crunchy. Like, like granola crunchy. Like she's granola. Spells and like, yeah. sauces. and Cat's more it's gummy bear. Um, I don't know. Pro definitely the uh, determination. I'm hoping the loyalty, the kind of... I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Bonnie and Kat are badass. They both want the best for the, the world and the people around them. They're super duper duper sincere and loving. Um, but, but, when you piss either one of them off, <laughs> run. <laughs> That's accurate. Candace, what about you? What do you feel like you bring to Caroline? You are Caroline. <laughs> she is Caroline. She is. I think, I think she is. The most, I, the most I, I don't think. Am I? I feel like maybe the Caroline. party planning and the like She's the Betty obnoxious Crocker, high pitched like, voice. Planner, the hot stress. Betty Crocker. She's the same. Like all the obnoxious 
Well, no, know. you're you're lovely. Oh, jeez. Well, she knows that, Paul. She doesn't need you to tell her that. <laughs> I'm 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 probably the least like my character. I think um, I I'm friendlier and more. Uh, Approachable, probably. <laughs> um, I don't yeah, know, man. I, Enzo's I know. pretty damn approachable. I think you bring the animalistic side out of him. Oh, yeah, before, baby. before we do scenes, he always like stretches. He like yeah, I have this up. kind of animal workout thing. Or, not workout. <laughs> animal workout. <laughs> like, I, do, I do kind of animal noises. Careful, man. You're back in the <laughs> to U.S. Kind of it's illegal. myself up. You know, sometimes when you're when you're doing a scene, you kind of realize you're kind of stuck in this one zone, and you're playing it like a certain way. And for me, what helps me is just to do something like just completely stupid, like he, you know, like like a horse noise, like. No, he literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he literally. <laughs> That's awesome. And all was well. He does. He goes like this. He, he goes. Does, he goes. Wow, 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 before his take, wow. before he starts shooting. I can't do it right now. My voice is like ten decibels lower than it was yesterday. <laughs> Are you trying to sound sexy? <laughs> no, man. I'm just. I, I think that's my it. coffee hasn't kicked in yet. I think it was decaf. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh, did you get it from the one on the right? That's decaf. Man, I don't know my right from left. It's uh, <laughs> the, n none of these are an R. Like, how are you supposed to figure that out? <laughs> God damn it! Malarkey <laughs> just woke up. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Alex. Hi, guys. Hi. First of all, I love you. Ian, you have amazing eyes. Love you, love you, love you. <laughs> uh, but in one of the episodes, we see Caroline sing, and you're amazing. Um, are, oh, thanks. How was it? Um, and are we going to see more? Um, I don't know if I'm going to say. I, I was very surprised that I sang as much this year. Um, but, and it was, I was completely terrified. I had to dust some cobwebs off the pipes. But it was pretty fun. Kind of felt like we shot the like karaoke stuff very early in the morning. So when mm. it's like, ten, you know, 7 a.m. on a Monday and you're dancing around to Pat Benatar up on a little crickety stage, you definitely feel like a dummy. Do you want to sing right now? No, I don't. Oh. Paul. <laughs> Thanks, though. I really appreciate it. <laughs> It's like, but thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> After you, Paul. Uh, <laughs> no, no. You don't want to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Thanks. Next question. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Karina. And I'm Sophia. And our question is for you is, now that Elena's gone, how do you think the show's going to change? Things are really going to be fantastic. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was a joke. <laughs> what do you guys... Oh, God. They turn on oh. you. They turn on you. <laughs> Headline. It's just an evolution of the story, guys. Everything changes. Stories come. Stories go. And this is, evol this is an evolution of the story. This is Mystic Falls without Elena Gilbert. Well, and also yesterday, I mean, the, the fact is that she's not dead. And, and what's beautiful is that you still feel the essence and, like, the spirit of Elena as we come back into season seven. Oh, do it, The writers did a, you guys did a great job of incorporating that. I still think when a show's been on for seven years, um, obviously, it was Nina's It has choice. been on for seven years, dude. It's been on for six seasons. It's literally... Oh, uh, Twelve years. Bigger, you act like bigger, my brother sometimes. <laughs> um, no, it's, when a show's been on for seven years, shut up. Um, you, you, you know, Nina obviously decided to leave. Um, it's, a, it's, it's kind of... You need a shift in dynamic, and I think it created a new sort of world um, in a way. And so I think I think it's a fresh take on, on on a show that's been on for over half a decade. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. We have time for a couple more questions. There you are, kiddo. You're in the spotlight now, girl. Yeah. Hi, I'm Samantha, and just wanted to let you know I'm a huge Steriline fan. Like, Woo! that's just what I need to happen. And um, <laughs> I just wanted to know if you guys will be having um, the Pop Funko, any figures released for the show? It needs to happen. Oh. <laughs> Those, those little um, collector items. Oh, yeah. That they make. Oh. Where do we get them? What are they? Are they bobbleheads? I want one. What are they? Are what they are dolls? They? She's doing the wobbly car head thingies. You guys are they're the worst. Oh, yeah. No, they're not wobbly. Right. No, they're just like. Holding hands, you know? 
Figures. I feel old. We're going to get Figures. right on that. Figurines. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Pop Funko. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's very cute. This is going to be our last really question. Cute. So make it good. <laughs> Hi. Hi, my name's Alexis. They're ready for us to get off stage anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They're all waiting for something else. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of you guys. <laughs> and I was... What'd you say? What'd you say? Hi, my name's Alexis. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Alexis. <laughs> Hi, Alexis. Uh, I was wondering, what is your guys' favorite OTP throughout the whole show? What's an That o would be an, a it? one true pair. A one true, one true, a one true oh. pair. A one, one true pair. So who's your favorite couple right. on the show of all time? Oh. Hey, I was going to start, dude. Do it. Go. Denzo. Denzo. Sure, man. Yeah. Gay Denzo. marriage is legal now. Yeah, I love Let's Denzo. Let's go. <laughs> I, I was gonna I, say Steriline, but now after seeing Kai and Damon, I'm I a know I've came in. Yes. Came in rules. Denzo Kamen. Elijah. <laughs> Elijah, Stefan. It's really more just and I stylish. really, really like Daniel Gillies. <laughs> yeah, they have a crush. To him. I'm I'm Delaric all day long. Absolutely. Uh, one hundred percent Damon and Alaric. Oh. Ian. Well, I guess that's the end of Denzo then. <laughs> I love him. No. I'm sorry. No, I love them all, man. Delark, Denzo, my boys. They're my boys. Now it's Kaiman. I mean, these are my brothers. What if Kai, Enzo, and Alaric, oh, and Damon all got together and just crushed a weekend in Vegas? <laughs> That'd be a good episode. Would you guys leave the hotel room? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes there's no need to leave the hotel room, dog. <laughs> um, no, there have been so many incredible pairings and groupings and ships, as we now call it, um, that I just, there's too many of them. There's six years of them, and I love them all. I'm grateful for all of them. Shut up, Paul. <laughs> I would say for me, it's Catherine and Stefan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's such a dangerous question. Um, Bonnie there's... and Damon fucking rock. They do. Yeah. They do Little really Damon. rock. Bonnie and I... Kai. Yeah, there's been some really fun stuff. I mean, you know, the show's... There's so much that goes on on the show, you know, from the action to the romance, and um, it's, it's easy for people to just get so excited about all the ships, but it's... it's there's so many different dynamics on the show, so it just depends on what mood I'm in that day. You know, if you kind of want that volatile thing, then, you know, I really liked, um, uh, I think, the Catherine and the Damon character. I think that was really cool for a while. Um, I, I, liked, um, I liked Klaus and Caroline. I liked, yes. Um, I mean, obviously Bonnie with everyone. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, I could go on forever. It's, yeah, well, I'm that's, that's fan, kind of so. the thing is that we all adore working with each other so much that we can't really differentiate. And for no. me, I, I joined late, and I feel very um, um, lucky yeah. and happy to be a part of this wonderful family, you know, and I feel like I've been welcomed. Liv and Tyler. Family. I'll keep going if you want. <laughs> Liv, Tyler, are you still going on? Sorry. Liv, Tyler. Oh, she wasn't finished with her. <laughs> Matt and anyway. Damon would uh, make Rose Matt and Damon. Damon. I thought that was really good. Uh, <laughs> Is my Damon. mic on? Sorry. I'll shut up. <laughs> That's all right. Cool. <laughs> Guys, well, listen, thank you so much for today. Thank you for six amazing years. Very much looking forward to <laughs> season guys. seven. Yeah. And thank you all so much for coming out today. Thank Thanks, you guys, guys so, thank so, you. so much.